Have you ever imagined what life would feel like if we had flying vehicles? Or to be more specific, flying motorcycles? Some of you might remember that movie scene from E.T. with the flying bicycle. Well, forget everything you've seen about flying machines in movies, and let's move into reality, because we have our very own flying motorbikes. This isn't something out of a sci-fi movie or the Star Wars franchise. It's real and could potentially change transportation as we know it. The company Volonaut created a flying motorbike known as the Volonaut Air Bike. It's a futuristic single occupant vehicle that gives us a glimpse into what our futures look like when people start gliding into the streets. Developed in stealth mode, Tomasz Patan, the company's CEO, released footage of himself flying it over a valley. He released a clip of the company's newest invention on his Instagram saying, I am thrilled to share a sample of what I have been working on in stealth mode. World's first real-world speeder bike. Stay tuned for the official Volonaut launch video soon. But what exactly is the Volonaut air bike, and why exactly is it so intriguing? Let's find out. Just a few days ago, Volonaut released a video titled, Volonaut air bike official launch, to showcase their amazing technological breakthrough. In the video, it's seen that the air bike is flying high over a desert. It then begins to skim over a desert stream, flying very close to the small body of water. The scene switches, and we finally see the rider controlling the bike and flying high over a deserted terrain, maneuvering the bike expertly and, surprisingly, remaining suspended in the air for a short while. Responses to the video were positive and full of anticipation from many. People in the comments congratulate Tomas, their love for his project, and the expert engineering from his company. There were joyful comments from the older generation who have been anticipating such an invention for quite some time. One user said, As a 50-year-old man, I have been praying we would see this type of technology before I go to meet my maker. I hope and pray for a huge success. Godspeed. Another said, When I was a child, I dreamed of a flying motorcycle. Now that dream has come true. However, a few comments spoke on how loud they'd expect the air bike to be, noting that the video had no natural sounds of the flying bike. A commenter stated, This thing has to be loud. And I honestly can't argue with that logic, seeing that the air bike's jet engines would most likely be deafening because they're jet engines. Analysts also point out that the details are still a tad sketchy. There's no takeoff or landing footage or any power plant specs yet, and some estimates suggest the airbike gets only a few minutes of flight time because of its light weight. The Volonaut airbike is spectacular, and we haven't even unpacked its features yet. But to properly understand the airbike, let's backtrack a bit and find out how it all began. Tomasz Patan, the force behind the airbike, is a Polish inventor and entrepreneur known around the world because of what he has and continues to contribute to the field of personal aerial mobility. He grew up and studied at Gdansk University of Technology, where he transitioned into constructing aerial filming drones and helicopters. With his wide array of knowledge in the aviation and drone industry, Patan became the co-founder of Jetson and served as its chief technology officer. That allowed him to propel the production of the Jetson 1, a personal electric vertical takeoff and landing EVTOL, aircraft that came out in 2021. The airbike was developed basically as a secret until mid-2025. Tomasz Patan quietly worked on it for years before he finally decided to come out of stealth mode in early May 2025. On May 1, 2025, he posted a very dramatic first flight video of his prototype flying over a forest. That's not all. A second teaser on May 4, also known as Star Wars Day, consisted of a stormtrooper. Reporters remind us that no details or announcements popped up before this grand unveiling, which, if you ask me, is a bit weird. Patan simply came out with it when he was ready. The futuristic single-occupant vehicle is a realization of a bold concept often portrayed in science fiction movies. This is where the inspiration came from many years ago, and with time, became the obsession to its creator," the company wrote in an emailed response. 
The Volonaut aircraft is the brainchild of Tomas after he developed the Jetson 1. Unlike the traditional designs some of us have seen before, the airbike has an extremely lightweight frame that's shockingly seven times lighter than a conventional superbike. It wouldn't have such a light frame without the advanced carbon fiber materials and the heavy use of 3D printing. It also has an open-air design and offers no protective frame around the pilot. Basically, it's different because it's not enclosed like a car, but like a normal bike, which makes it feel less like a drone-based vehicle. Luckily, the airbike totally escapes the rigid mold of the Jetson. Patan himself says his airbike is the first hover bike with no propellers. Crazy, right? He trades Jetson's eight rotors for jet thrust instead for a spectacular effect. The airbike takes inspiration from flying motorcycle designs that existed in the past, and even from sci-fi movies, but applies next-gen materials and controls. Let's just say Patan took lessons from Jetson 1 and combined them with a strikingly different propulsion approach to make a totally new type of personal flying contraption that sits on the fence between electric drones and jetpacks. Its most amazing feature is jet propulsion instead of the usual rotor blades. The exact engine type hasn't been released to the public yet, but reports confirm it has no visible propellers. Given that it's a jet-powered bike, the airbike harnesses something called a proprietary stabilization system that's controlled by a flight computer which is present on board. This system not only allows the aircraft to balance in the air automatically, but it keeps the rider stable as well. So you can say it effectively makes control as simple as steering a motorbike. Cool, right? Media reports reiterate the official claim that a flight computer allows hovering without active control, so even newbies like you and I can take off safely. Recently, the tech world's been buzzing about the Volonaut airbike. Its futuristic design instantly grabbed attention, with some even calling it the future of personal transportation. But of course, some suspect it's just AI-generated or a clever fake. Interestingly, another hoverbike recently popped up in the tech scene that's just as cool, the Hoverbike S3X by Hoversurf. The Hoverbike S3X, developed by a Russian company, has its headquarters in California, USA. Initially delivered to the Dubai police in 2017, it works with a much more structured and cautious approach compared to the airbike. Featuring a carbon monocoque frame with four exposed propellers mounted on beams, it delivers a total thrust of 364 kilograms. Unlike the Volonaut's clean aesthetic, the Hoverbike S3X closely resembles a drone that has a saddle with an adjustable seat, joystick controls, and an onboard dashboard as well. Now let's compare the Volonaut Airbike and the Hoverbike S3X. Performance-wise, the Volonaut Airbike has way better edges with a top speed of 200 kilometers per hour, 124 miles per hour, and a jet propulsion system that gives it a sleek, high-altitude gliding. Its proprietary stabilization system, which we already know is enhanced by a flight computer, gives it automatic hovering and 360-degree visibility without obstruction. I'd say that's really impressive. In contrast, the Hoverbike S3X gets a maximum speed of only 96 kilometers per hour, 60 miles per hour, quite a reduction with a limited flight time of 10 to 25 minutes with a human pilot. It generally depends on the weight and weather conditions at that particular moment. Safety is also a huge distinguishing factor. The Hoverbike S3X is already equipped with a stellar, multi-layered safety system. Would you believe it consists of electronic emergency landing functions, a kill switch, and even passive crash protection features like deformation zones? Well, you better believe it if you don't already. Meanwhile, details about the airbike's safety elements are limited. The airbike's flight computer provides automatic stabilization, hover, and balance to prevent losing control. The fixed side stands let it land easily, too. Red rear LED taillights warn other pilots slash vehicles when the bike begins to slow down, but despite everything, the rider is fully exposed. There's no roll bar, windshield, or enclosure, so any crash would directly impact the pilot and could be really dangerous. No airbags, seatbelts, or ballistic parachute have been announced for the Volanaut, unlike some other personal VTOLs, and that's quite a hazard. 
The company exercises caution by wearing protective gear, as shown in the company's official video, where the pilot wears a full-face helmet, but formal crash safety measures have not been announced yet. Additionally, cost and accessibility mark a major difference. The Hoverbike S3X is expensive. It's priced at a steep $150,000, with an optional $10,000 training program with travel and accommodation bonuses. I doubt civilians can use them yet because their use requires extensive training and is sadly still bound by ambiguous flight regulations. The Volonaut airbike still doesn't have a price yet, nor has it been confirmed for public sale. We just have to wait and see what the company releases, because patents state it remains a personal project for now. Although its design hints at a more minimalist and potentially more accessible future. So Volonaut describes their airbike as a breakthrough in personal air mobility. But how does it work in the real world? Well, I can point out a couple of ways, and one of them is urban commuting. Since the Volonaut airbike is a high-speed, single-person flying motorcycle, we could expect to use it in the city. With its agility and speeds up to about 124 miles per hour, I expect it could theoretically clear traffic by flying over it, because it's seven times lighter than a typical superbike and can hover or travel through confined spaces. On paper, this could help alleviate traffic in crowded cities by offering a faster shortcut through the sky, but in practice, not so much. This idea has too many limitations. First, current test flights of the airbike show that its endurance is very limited. Observers predict only about two to three minutes of airtime. Plus, it has fuel constraints too. Oh, and let's not forget that because it's an open air vehicle, the airbike has zero weather or crash protection. So we can say goodbye to using it to maneuver in traffic because it's just not safe enough. Another way we could potentially apply the airbike into our daily lives is using it for emergency response, where its speed and ability to fly over blocked terrain would let first responders reach remote or inaccessible areas much faster than any traditional vehicles. However, this vision is limited by some major constraints. The airbike has a very short flight time, only a few minutes, plus it carries only one person with very little equipment and currently lacks safety systems like parachutes. The noise and exhaust from its jet propulsion also make it unsuitable in sensitive or crowded areas. Thus, it's safe to say that without a wider range and much more effective safety protocols, using it in real-life emergencies continues to stay highly speculative. We wouldn't want to further harm someone due to how unsafe operating the airbike might be for the invalids. The Volonaut airbike has a stabilization system that lets it hover and move around easily. Volonaut markets it as an exhilarating recreational vehicle, promising riders the feeling of soaring like a bird in what the company describes as a dreamlike experience. Therefore, recreational use is its most anticipated function. Tech media describes the airbike as thrilling and visually impressive, linking it to something that came out of a sci-fi movie. Promotional materials with an added video of a Star Wars Stormtrooper re-emphasize its appeal to adventure seekers. But there's another downside. Its open frame design means that riders are fully exposed while riding at incredibly high speeds. This is way too risky. Why? A crash or even minor contact with obstacles would be fatal. Experts note that if you want to use them for fun, you'd need to undergo extensive training, sort of like the training required for ultralight aircraft or personal jetpacks. Let's not forget how loud a jet engine is. You'd better remember, using the airbike for fun would most likely annoy everyone in your neighborhood because of how loud it sounds. I know I wouldn't want to be woken up at 5 a.m. because of such a noise. Another suggested application is in surveillance and security. Theoretically, it can hover and maneuver in tight spaces, monitoring the security in urban environments or remote locations. But its loud jets and very obvious exhaust plumes aren't stealthy at all. Its short operational window limits how effective it is, too. Furthermore, since there are strict regulations around surveillance in the air, it wouldn't be used very often. It seems like there are so many limitations. From a design and regulatory standpoint, the airbike is a stunning invention, but it's not yet practical for wide-scale deployment. 
It doesn't have protective spaces. It doesn't have any published flight range or endurance data, and it produces intense noise. Even though it is seen as an ultralight vehicle that doesn't require a pilot's license, its high speed and jet fuel propulsion would definitely test those regulatory boundaries. Patan indicates that it will be easy to fly, much like the Jetson 1, which took only two days of training. But still, no specific training plans for the airbike have been announced. Plus, there's zero infrastructure to support everyday airbike use right now. No designated takeoff landing areas, fueling stations, or even public air corridors. We would need completely new systems, including vertiports and traffic regulation for low altitude urban flight. Moreover, the airbike still isn't on the public market yet. We have no confirmed price or release timeline, so let's just stay hopeful. For now, the Volonaut airbike remains an eye-catching prototype that points towards an exciting future, but isn't quite ready to become a part of our daily lives. In summary, the Volonaut airbike is a strong step towards a new frontier in the transportation scene, although it's not clear whether it can fit into the world as we know it just yet. So what do you think about the airbike and all its cool features? Thank you if you made it to the end of this video. Be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to click like and subscribe to this channel for more updates like this.